greetings, dear uh, Winter School community. I'm going to talk about uh, the post-platform architectures in a post-pandemic world, um, uh, which is, sounds uh, bizarre um, uh, at the first sight. But uh, if you see the context of uh, this post-platform architecture, uh, it is, this is not else than, uh, uh, than trying to cope with the dominant narratives about the post-COVID world. And uh, um, um, in this uh, um, uh, fight against for the master, master discourse or a ma uh, master framing, uh, how can we see the post-pandemic uh, world? Uh, and I think that we can see a lot of misleading wrong, false, um, uh, but um, uh, mainstream uh, narratives. Uh, so I, I, I do not have time to um, uh, provide argumentation why I think that the, the, the um, uh, less globalization narrative uh, is misleading and why more transnational um, uh, integration uh, or as Sean Cleary was talking about it, uh, uh, a proper or better global governance um, uh, is important. I do not believe in uh, the whole post-truth narrative. Uh, uh, it is an absolutely overemphasized uh, uh, discourse. And I think that um, uh, the, the COVID uh, um, um, uh, worked like the theater of truth so we can understand uh, uh, the essential um, uh, configuration of, um, of our complex world in a better way than before, um, even if there are a lot of um, uh, infodemic um, uh, effect and there are a lot of fake news uh, somewhere um, uh, in the universe of objectivated information um, uh, in, a, in a shadowy corners of the internet. <laughs> and we are talking about the deprecation of science or the discounted importance of science in these civilization wars uh, or, or uh, the loss of, uh, of truth in science. <laughs> um, uh, I think, um, and my recommended approach is that science is in move on and on and science uh, produced uh, brilliantly during the COVID times, and uh, uh, we can ask a lot um, uh, uh, to scientists and uh, 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 technologists um, 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 and, and, and other fighters of um, uh, knowledge uh, generation, uh, and so on and so on. So instead of the posthuman patterns, I see um, a lot of push uh, forward to an increasing human centeredness um, uh, in a lot of aspects of uh, technology um, uh, and economics. Um, um, uh, but if you like, you can take it as a normative um, or wishful um, uh, thinking um, um, uh, when we are talking about uh, more solidarity or more democracy, as shown, uh, uh, said before. Uh, or instead of um, uh, strong uh, power-based control structures, we would like to see, and we are day by day, see more horizontality um, uh, and hori horizontal effects, mutuality. Uh, and finally, um, uh, 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 there is a so-called platform society paradigm or, uh, or uh, um, a narrative which became somehow triumphant uh, in the post-COVID world. Um, uh, and I try to argue against this platform society approach, uh, trying to provide uh, uh, some platforms uh, which uh, where the arrows are um, uh, showing to a totally different way. So what is this platform society idea? Um, um, uh, this, this narrative um, uh, was born more than 10 years ago. <laughs> it is about the, the giant conglomerates uh, of online services, <laughs> uh, or if you like, Kill Bill or Kill Bill 2, you remember the word gargantuan. So the, these are the gargantuan 
um, uh, actors of online scene um, uh, from uh, the Amazon to uh, uh, Facebook uh, to the Alphabet, Google, um, uh, uh, and that other uh, uh, giants, they are ruling the world. Uh, uh, they are defining everything. Uh, what we do, what we think, uh, they know uh, 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 about us everything, which is a total um, uh, crazy um, uh, idea. Uh, now it's a major, it's a very major um, uh, discourse. You can see how many variation of platform society um, um, uh, exist from platform revolution to platform capitalism. What is the problem with this uh, 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 approach? Uh, it is an absolutely monocausal um, uh, paradigm, as Sean Cleary was talking about it again. Uh, so when 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 the theorists of platform society uh, states that platforms do not reflect the social, but they produce the social structure, uh, this is an extremely misleading narrative because platforms are playing a role in producing or reproducing uh, society, uh, uh, the social structure. But there are a lot of other players, there are a lot of other actors. And this is not the only goal of platforms to, um, uh, uh, to shape the changing power structure in favor of these new platform structures. So I think that um, uh, 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 it's a very rich, very challenging, very important discourse, but a misleading discourse to talk about platform society. And the right question is, who is or should be responsible for anchoring public values in societies that are increasingly organized through online systems? So I think that this is the main question. And, uh, and that's why I'm talking about post-platform architectures and not about post-platform society, because I think that architectures are important, <laughs> but uh, they can play their role only uh, simultaneously with other actors, um, mindsets, institutions, values, um, um, uh, and so on. So I would like to talk about them. Uh, so I choose six, uh, so six uh, uh, new platform because the post-platform architecture is also platform-based. So they are also platforms, but very different platforms uh, uh, than the gargantuan business for for-profit oriented ones. And from, <clears throat> from this sense, I think, uh, that we can uh, uh, we can see them as pre uh, precursors or forerunners or heralds of a new kind or a new world of platforms. So uh, uh, in my last uh, uh, six minutes, I will try to provide a, a short intro of these six um, 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 uh, new paradigms uh, of platforms as Sean Cleary was talking about. So uh, um, uh, what about the personal online data stores? They are not just dreams <laughs> or normative ambitions to make something which is against the uh, Google, Googleization of personal data collection. They are existing practices. They are working technologies, living solutions, um, 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 uh, which, which can lead to a more decentralized um, um, uh, web, uh, uh, providing more rights and technical abilities um, uh, to people uh, to manage and deploy their key personal data, which is one of the most important uh, wish when we are talking about our online um, uh, uh, presence. Uh, <coughs> the the uh, POD paradigm was defined by Tim Berners-Lee, the father of World Wide Web, and linked data. And uh, oh, that's why it, now it's a kind of convergence point of other technology solutions um, uh, for a decentralized uh, web applications. And that's why there are a lot of uh, business and academic um, uh, entities who are trying to build um, uh, new infrastructure um, elements. So you will see on the right, 
uh, column, always um, um, uh, existing firms, companies, projects, um, research groups. And since I'm absolutely sure that our presentations will be shared with you, if you are interested in um, um, a, a special future platform, you can, um, uh, you can check them from step by step. Perhaps you can see Personium on the, on the right. <laughs> uh, it's not else that a special server, a special type of server dedicated to PODs um, um, uh, world or Inrapt is a for-profit company which would like to make money for providing POD uh, services. Um, um, uh, now there is a growing community of My Data Global, uh, and we have to jump um, um, uh, to the blockchain universe. I'm absolutely sure that maybe this is the most well-known um, uh, platform um, uh, type blockchain as a distributed ledger, um, uh, uh, which uh, cryptocurrency application is just one from the several possible um, um, uh, application. Uh, its main message is that you can mutually make contracts, um, um, uh, share responsibility and coordinate your action without a third party authentication in a very, very secure and well-designed uh, fault tolerant environment. Now I just uh, run through the slides. So I was talking about this context, running into the post platform architectures. So you can see it. <laughs> okay, um, uh, so that was the slide about the platform society and the gargantuan um, uh, super platform or hyper platforms and the synonyms of platform society. So um, uh, this was the critics of um, uh, platform society and the proposed basic or right question. So these are the six post platform architectures I was talking about or as precursors or forerunners. <laughs> now we are over on the personal online data stores, the pods, and uh, uh, arrived to the blockchain uh, galaxy. So uh, 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 now, uh, as you can see, there is a very sophisticated um, uh, blockchain uh, development ecosystem um, uh, in the world. And blockchain is extremely important uh, because there are other services built into the blockchain uh, uh, platform, like the NFTs, the non-fungible tokens, which are now a little bit overhyped um, uh, there are very, very, very expensive artistic objects um, uh, provided as non-fungible tokens. Uh, <laughs> but uh, in the deep, there are a lot of um, um, uh, important possible usage of it, uh, uh, since it is a re really good proof of ownership that is separate from the copyright. So uh, maybe a, a mi micro payment based uh, consumption uh, uh, of uh, intellectual property <laughs> will be well managed through NFTs. Uh, the next one, <laughs> uh, DAO, Decentralized Autonomous Organization. Uh, um, uh, its original meaning uh, uh, was a special online community um, based on blockchain architecture, um, uh, sharing a cryptocurrency wallet. But today the extended meaning is that a virtual decentralized organization uh, uh, is a hierarchy-less uh, community, um, 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 uh, a working community, um, uh, which has a special workflow without any uh, uh, hierarchy. Um, and there are a lot of visionary ambitions, a new participatory governance paradigm, um, an internet governed by open community control services, and so on, and so on, including the slow deaths of firm. And uh, you can see on the right side that there are a lot of existing DAO solutions. Uh, <laughs> uh, we can uh, jump over on service mesh because it's a little bit technical one. It's a technical infrastructure of these peer-to-peer uh, -peer or horizontal um, uh, services. And the final one is the so-called open source AI. If you see <laughs> around, you can see that governments and uh, multinational companies and the gargantuan platforms 
are developing uh, 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 AI solutions and AI business and AI basic technologies, but there are attempts to to <laughs> to change this paradigm, uh, uh, providing. Uh, citizen science solutions, um, uh, generating open source AI, and there are beautiful uh, platforms and beautiful projects. The Hugging Face, then Humans in the Loop, which is a project of the Library of the Congress, which is an open source AI um, uh, uh, project. So um, uh, uh, I think that these solutions or platforms I um, uh, presented are parts uh, of a bigger solution ecosystem which uh, um, uh, which can really serve our normative needs about a more democratic, more horizontal um, um, uh, future online um, or digital uh, environment. Thank you very much.